Dana White's a bit of a black sheep. Some love him, some hate him, and some take every chance they get to crucify his every move. From throwing Cain Velasquez under the bus to not paying UFC fighters enough money, here are all the reasons why people hate Dana White. Starting with the fact that he bashed Cain Velasquez after he lost to Junior Dos Santos. White's commentary after the fight sent UFC fans and enthusiasts into quite a frenzy. Immediately after the fight, he shared his pretty opinionated thoughts with an interview viewer. He said that he's no strategist or coach, but he didn't understand why they didn't go for the shot early. According to him, Kane should have shot in on Junior because he had the power early in the fight. He should have tried to knock him out sooner. Dana then added that Santos got tired at the end of fights, and that Kane was standing right in front of him trying to trade and bang with Santos when he got struck behind the ear and went down, along with his heavyweight championship. I mean, he's not wrong. When you're a fighter and you do an interview, days before a fight and say, you can't stand for 10 minutes. That's insanity. Now, if someone like Randy Couture had said these exact words, fans would have been applauding his insight. They would have attributed his knowledge to the years of experience he'd accumulated through his numerous battles in the cage. But since it was Dana White, it was practically blasphemy. Yep, that's right. Randy Couture comes off as the greatest guy in the world, Captain America. He's the furthest thing from it. And I'm happy to not be in business with him anymore. Dana's considered to be as evil as the devil himself in the MMA blogosphere. Not to play the devil's advocate here, but I mean, I don't like him much either. But he was just doing what he's supposed to do. Dana was providing commentary on the UFC on Fox event. And when you're doing that, you're basically being paid to state your opinion. And that's what he did. It's not his fault people didn't agree with him. People just can't stop finding faults in Dana White, man. Plus, they also think he needs to stay behind the camera more. Because for some reason, a lot of folks are bothered by the fact that White does his vlogs and appears in interviews and promotional stuff. Gregor was saying, I will finish this guy in the first round. This is the greatest 145 pounder ever. The only 145 pound champion ever in UFC history. I've heard comments like, he needs to stay behind the scenes and realize he's not a part of the show as the president of the UFC. Well, he definitely is the president, but why should that mean he isn't part of the show? He is a promoter. His number one job is being a part of the show, and people watch his stuff. He's pretty popular across all social media platforms. Once fans stop tuning into his shows, maybe he'll step back. But for now, we can bank on another big appearance by the president anytime something UFC-related happens. You know what they say, haters gonna hate. If Dana didn't show up to an event, it'd be the talk of the town. The whole internet would be buzzing, blasting him for being a no-show and demanding an explanation. I guess there's no making fans happy, right? But honestly, they might be coming from a good place. Dana can be a little unprofessional. This might sound like I'm being a little too sensitive. But in the UFC, fighters rarely get a chance to defend themselves, if ever. All we get to hear is Dana's side of the story. Obviously, a lot of people have issues with that. Some reckon he goes too far, and that he's gotten a huge head as a result of being the president as long as he's been. Either way, it looks like he might be getting too big for his boots during his reign over the UFC. Which brings me to a similar topic that's had some pretty bad consequences. He shows favoritism. All mixed martial art fans have got their favorites in the cage. I would just kept saying, dude, you're amazing. You're amazing. You're incredible. So proud of you, you know? I'm, re I'm really proud of you. <laughs> <laughs> and since Dana's won too, it's pretty understandable that he's got his favorites too. Unfortunately, it's painfully apparent that he prefers some fighters over others. And that kind of bias makes him unable to do his job as president in a fair and reasonable manner. Let's take a look. UFC fighter Josh Koscheck has been given chance after chance to fight, despite the fact that he's clearly past his prime years. Josh is a big guy, and Dana's spoken highly of him a bunch of times. And I get that he's tough, but five consecutive losses? That would have gotten anyone else kicked out of the UFC. Koscheck had some pretty big victories in his glory days, but it's true he should have been cut a lot sooner than he actually was. Dana's favoritism for Josh Koscheck is pretty obvious, just like his hypocrisy. At the UFC 200 card, I love Koscheck. I love that kid. I love the way he fights. I love his attitude. Guy gets booed out of the arena every time he comes in, but he still goes in and fights his ass off. 
And he... Conor McGregor decided to pull out because of the media duties set in front of him. The Irish fighter didn't agree with how elaborate the plans were, and a lot of people turned against him and supported Dana White on this issue. you think that'd be the end of that. But alas, no. The plot thickens. When Ronda Rousey returned at UFC 207 to fight Amanda Nunes, she was allowed to skip almost every single media obligation that McGregor wasn't allowed to. Why? I guess what Ronda wants, Ronda gets. This kind of hypocrisy isn't acceptable, no matter who you are, especially if it's concerning your top two fighters. It's pretty clear Dana had a preference. If he could have made the media obligations go away with ease, why didn't he? And how many other situations have there been like this that we aren't aware of? Aside from letting his biases go unchecked, Dana White's also about one thing. Money, money, and money. You see, he's very money-oriented. Take the UFC middleweight title, for example. To anyone watching the mixed martial arts fights, it was pretty obvious that Yoel Romero was the deserving candidate for the championship. Unfortunately, the president of the UFC saw things differently. He instead decided to give George St. Pierre the chance to battle Bisping in his comeback fight. You owe it to the fans, you owe it to that belt, you owe it to this company, and you owe it to Johnny Hendricks to give him that opportunity to, to, to fight again. This is a move that's clearly driven by money, and this is an ongoing theme in White's tenure as the UFC Prez. At the end of the day, rankings don't mean much, and Dana will always go for the fights that make the most money. Not a lot of people are too happy about this, but it looks like Dana wants everyone to just suck it up. For someone who loves making money, he's pretty stingy with it. This goes on and on of sports that work in other countries and don't work in other countries. The one thing that I believe worked would work everywhere is fighting. One thing that tends to bug UFC fighters is that Dana doesn't pay them enough money. Okay, it's a little unfair to blame this entirely on Dana White. I mean, he's not the only decision maker for the organization. But if you think about the fact that he's the person that fighters approach when they need to negotiate their pay, it makes a lot of sense. One major reason why people don't like Dana is that they feel he doesn't pay the fighters what they're owed or how much they've earned. Instead, popular fighters who bring a lot of money to the UFC get paid unbelievable amounts of money, like Conor McGregor and Ronda Rousey. And then there's guys like Tony Ferguson. The fighter claimed that he got less than half of the amount he was promised. I think we're underpaid personally. I'm going to be real. I'm not going to say it too much. You know, I mean, Dana said something the other day and I, I put it on. It's on my phone. I think it was MMA fighting, actually. After his UFC 209 fight against Habib Nurmagomedov got canceled. That's not acceptable, no matter how you look at it. Though I guess one could argue that if there was better pay anywhere else in the MMA industry, UFC athletes would be leaving on a regular basis. But they don't. UFC is kind of at the top of the hill, and that's where the most money can be made. Either way, these are all the reasons why people hate Dana White.